BBC Radio Scotland. So we are cruising towards the new year and 2020. You might even be writing your resolutions as I speak. Uh, Maybe getting rid of some of the Christmas weight, making better friends, connecting with old friends, saving some more money perhaps think I need to do all of these things, <laughs> actually. I should probably be writing all of these down. Uh, but if you're unhappy in your current job or you're looking for a career change, this could be the moment for you, I suppose. Um, 2020, the big year, the big leap. Um, we've got Shan Saba with us, a recruitment expert. Hi, Shan. Hi there. You all right? I'm good, thanks. And we've got Lauren uh, Cheeran as well, a midlife and health coach uh, who's on career number four. Hello, Lauren. I am indeed. Good morning. How are you? You all right? Really well, thank you. you? Yes, not too bad, thank you. So Shan's here to kind of explain why this might be a good time of year to be thinking about an actual change. And it seems odd, doesn't it? Because everywhere's shut this time of year, Shan. There's there's no career progress to be made, surely. Absolutely nothing happens at this time of year. (laughs) Everything stops, doesn't it? Why is it such a good time to be getting ready then for next year? Well, depending on what job you actually have, but most employers have some sort of wind down or you may be off and you've got a significant amount of people that are off now for a couple of weeks maximum now's the right time to start looking at your cv reevaluate it maybe get it ready get it pre- prepared it's like a service and mot for your for your cv and get, like getting that ready but you're surrounded by friends you're surrounded by family people that maybe want to help you and give you some advice and guidance now's the time to get them when they're not busy yeah, that's true, actually. A bit of downtime. Um, exactly. Lauren, I'm intrigued by the fact that you've, you're have you on your fourth career um, uh, now. And so with Shan's advice, that now is a good time to be thinking about this, actually, how easy is it to change between jobs, between careers? I think the key thing really is having clarity about what you want to do and what's important to you. Because the, the more clear you are in your own mind about where your strengths and skills lie, how you can employ, you know, how you can use them, whether that's working for yourself or working for someone else, and you've got clarity and a vision about where you want to go and where you want to be 12 months from now, that will make it a lot easier for you to slot into something new because your messaging, whether it's on a CV or in, uh, you know, when you're talking to somebody, is going to be that much more crisp and clear and concise. So I think that's probably my number one um, comment. Yeah, yeah. What have, what have been the indicators for you that it's been a, t- a time to change? Oh, well, I, I am on career number four and this yeah, one was exactly. quite a big change. So I came out of financial services as a senior exec. Um, please don't hate me for that. <laughs> um, and I thought I had early onset dementia. It turned out that I'd just gone through a very early menopause. So when I discovered I hadn't gone through dementia and that it was just simply that midlife change, I just was immediately knew in my doctor's surgery that I was on a mission to help other women and to support businesses to help them know how to um, you know, support their women and to make sure that people understood how to manage menopause at work as well. Yeah. So that one was quite an easy transition for me. I simply went off and retrained and I qualified as a coach initially and a health coach and that allowed me to help support other women. That opened doors to go into the corporate place and again, it was simply because I had such clarity about what I wanted to do. Yeah. It was simply, there were no obstacles. It just seemed to flow really easily. Yeah. So, yeah, it was good. Uh, that's interesting. And I want to bring Shan back in because um, it's interesting to try to work out what it is that will help you get that new career. Are CVs still important? What information do you need? How do you approach a new career? Yeah, I think you need to think about what you want to do first. Something that's really important is when you're looking for a new role, I think your other guest I just mentioned that there, she was ready to change. Yeah. There was you know life-changing event that went on there for, for her. And I think you need to know what that is. If you just hate your job, you need to know why you hate your mm. job. And then you need to be excited about the job that you're going for or any jobs that you're going for. So the, you need to take stock of those things. Yes, it's not just about CVs. A lot of online applications are now you know, carried out and that's how people do apply for jobs these days. Um, but there's a standard and there's a kind of there's key information that you need to have on there. And if you know what that is and you're prepared and ready for that, that's great. Yeah. What sort of things then need to so be on there? You're looking at what you've been what you've achieved over the last period of time in your current employment. So what is your achievements? What have been your key responsibilities? You need to know those. Also the softer skills are really, really important. You know, the people facing skills that most jobs and employers now require and something I would say is really really important is watch your social media applying for jobs through social media is really really important LinkedIn, Facebook, Google Jobs, they're all relatively new ways of applying for roles or being hunted for roles if that makes sense Um, but what you put on your social media can catch up with you as well so be ready for that, if you're a troller be aware (laughs) 
Yeah, indeed. <laughs> Do you know, Shan, something you said has just caught my attention a minute ago, which was that this is a good time to be sort of connecting with people and stuff. Yeah. You don't want to be the guy at the, the Hogmanay party who's trying to network <laughs> his way around the, no. the New Year's celebrations, do you? <laughs> I think plenty of recruitment people do that really? at Hogmanay parties. But oh, no, no way. Uh, I think there's, no, there's a time and a place for it. And I don't mean that you're networking, but you'll be in company of people, friends and family that have maybe gone for interviews or have experience of carrying out interviews that you maybe not wouldn't see and this Got is the you. time of year of bringing families and friends together it's maybe asking for advice and tips you know understanding what the process may be yeah Lauren very briefly then what would be your word of encouragement to somebody who's kind of teetering on the brink of going for a new career believe in yourself be, get clear and believe in yourself and just know that you can do it you're absolutely perfect just as you are there you go perfect and Shan is, what's, what's your final word of advice going into the new year well, when it comes to career like the scouts be prepared <laughs> nice okay good Shan thank you very much Shan Sabah recruitment expert and Lauren